Hello guys, this is Srinath again back with one more video about IELTS. Yes, me. First of all, I would like to thank each and every one of you who have shown massive feedback, given good response to my previous two videos regarding IELTS generally as well as IELTS listening. In this video, I'll be discussing about basics of IELTS and the set IELTS listening and the sections involved in it, and I'll be going each section in detail. Are you a person who is planning to appear for IELTS examination and wishing to score a perfect 8 plus band or are you a person who has been struggling hard to get a good band score in IELTS listening even after the continuous or uh, multiple attempts in IELTS and yet to get a good number then you are in the right place. This particular video is tailor made for you and uh, this will cover various sections of IELTS listening what all the things can go wrong and what needs to be done and what all the strategies needs to be uh, implemented to score a perfect band 9. Stay tuned and be with me. As I've told you previously, I'll be discussing about the listening module today. And this module has four set of sections. Section 1, 2, 3 and 4. So all these each sections consist of 10 questions each and you'll have to attempt all the 40 questions to score a perfect band 9. The types of questions involved in listening module, in section 1, it is typically a conversation between two people. Majority of the times, you will get the question types such as fill in the blanks only. In the section 2, it will be a monologue wherein any of the instructor will be explaining about something and you will have to find the right answers in this. So the typical type of questions involved are fill in the blanks, multiple choice questions and maps. So maps, usually the repetition frequency is 1 is to 4. Say in 4 attempts, you'll be getting one time maps in the second section. Section 3, as I've told you in my previous videos also, this is the section where I feel is the toughest one, provided if all the 10 questions are of multiple choice type. Because as the section progressing, they try to increase the difficulty level of the examination. And in the section 3, the choices will be much more lengthier. So majority of the people find it very difficult to attempt and get all the answers right first time. So this takes a bit of a practice and uh, the type of questions which are involved in section 3 are multiple choice, fill in the blanks and match the headings. We'll be going through each and every type of questions in detail and I'll be sharing across the strategies to crack this test. In the section 4, this will again be a monologue in which a person will be describing a case study uh, you'll have to catch the right answers and uh, typically in this section all the questions will be fill in the blanks and uh, one thing is that all the 10 questions will be uh, appearing in uh, parallel you'll not be getting any free time in between like section one where after the fifth or sixth question they'll be giving you a break to read the next set of questions but in section four they'll not be giving any kind of breaks in between and you'll have to attempt all the 10 questions in one go let us understand each sections and uh, the strategy is to crack these sections. Just to conclude, the IELTS listening test consists of 40 questions which needs to be attempted in 30 to 32 minutes. If you're appearing for the tutor based test, then you'll be getting only two minutes to review your answers at the end. One suggestion for you guys, attempt all the questions irrespective of whether you know it or not. Give a guess, just try your luck because there is no negative marking for any of the wrong answers. So if provided if it is your good day, then you may land in a good answer. Section 1, as I've told you, majorly it is a conversation between two people. But typically in recent years, what I've seen is all the questions which are appearing is of fill in the blanks type. The fill in the blanks will look like this. There are two types of questions. Strategies for uh, uh, cracking this fill in the blanks is, first of all, you need to read the instructions very carefully. Here, we have mentioned in the instructions one word and or a number so you'll have to make sure when answering you are using only one word and a number or a number okay you cannot use two words or you cannot use two numbers skim the questions so you'll be given one minute of time to review all the questions before the audio starts playing so if you are going the uh, questions one by one if you are reading continuously then you'll not be able to complete all the questions in the given point of time so you need to skim the questions. For example, here in the focus, you have to just skim how cook seasonal product, small classes. Also offers classes like that. You have to skim the questions and you'll have to go through each and every question before the audio starts playing. This is important because you will be having a fair idea what's the what this section is all about. 
and uh, you'll be ready to catch the answers when the audio is being played. Follow the question sequence. That is very important over here. See, in the books, we are used to uh, follow the questions. That is one, two, three, four, one. Everything comes one after the other. But in the examinations, the first question will be here, second will be here, third will be here, fourth will be here. So there is no specific order as such. While reading, you will have to make sure where the first question is, second question is, third question is, fourth question is. So with that, you will be able to crack it. In my one of the attempts, I missed it and directly after four, uh, after fourth, I was looking for the fifth question over here, but the fifth question actually was here. So I have lost one or two marks because of it. So it's a word of caution for you from the experience what I have got by attempting this test. Get used to the foreign accent because say in the question they say like my name is Mike Robinson. So then they will be spelling the uh, letter Robinson. R O B I N S O N. So with that kind of accent you have to get acquainted yourself and also when pronouncing the numbers for example if they are telling their mobile number then they will not be in India, we are used to say 9800000 like that. But in the test, they will be telling 98000. So they will be referring 0 as O. So you will have to be very careful over there. You might completely miss this if you are not prepared for it. The answers will be stressed more in the audio. Like for example, here, the first fill in the blank, how to and cook with seasonal products. Like if the answer is prepare, then audio is getting played. This prepared word will be stressed. You'll have to listen to it very carefully. Seasonal products will be cooked and you'll be learning how to prepare like this. So prepare will be stressed. So that will be a trigger for you that this is one of the important word. If it fits in over here, then your word is the right answer. So one very important suggestion, all the answers most of the times will be stressed in the audio. Just hear for it. With the practice, you'll come to know your subconscious will catch it. Anticipate the possible answers while proofreading. So when during the one uh, minute of free time uh, while able to go through the, all the questions over here, you'll have to just guess the right answers. Like for example, for here, other information, small classes also offers, maybe it may be music or drawing, anything as such. Clients who return get uh, something with the percentage. Always we are used to have 10% discount, discount, 30% discount like that. So you can anticipate there will be telling something about percentage. So one word over here, how would you write percentage? Now the answer in the, over here, the instruction is to write one word and or a number. So you'll have to write, if the answer is 10 percentage, then 10 in numerics and percentage in a tree. You cannot use the symbol percentage, then the answer will be marked as wrong or incorrect. Guess the answer if you are missed hearing. So there is nothing wrong in guessing the answer if you have missed to hear it and you may land up in the proper sweet place and you may get the right answers because your subconscious will be receiving all the audio data and it may suggest some of the answers which may be right. So just go with a guess. If you have, if you are not sure about any answers, then just give a guess. So there is no negative mark. Pay attention to spelling and plurals. Mainly over here, like if the answer is flowers, that is F-L-O-W-E-R-S. And instead of it, if you're writing flower, then it will be marked as incorrect. So spelling and plural words. Okay. These are the areas where people tend to lose marks, even though they have got the answer correctly. Watch out for the distractors. Distractors as such. Now, for example, clients who return get a 10% discount if the answer is 10%. But previously, the firm was used to offer 15% discount. Last year, the company also offered 30% discount. Like that, they'll be giving you two or three options related to discount. So these distractors play a very vital role. You have to hear carefully. This is about this year. Clients who return get a 10% discount. So just don't get confused by the distractors. Just hear out the question and you'll understand. Let us go to the section 2. In the section 2, majorly equations are of... As I mentioned before, either it is multiple choice or it is maps in general. So here I'm just showing you how the multiple choice question looks like. So this is a section two uh, multiple choice question appeared in one of the practice tests. So the strategy for attempting this multiple choice would be is that whenever in the, uh, for example, if an audio is being played about elaboration, then it is not necessary that all the choices are coming in order. They will not be in order. They will be in a zigzag condition. First they may read out C, then they may read out A, and then they may read out B. Just one thought for you that this will not be uh, disclosed in order and it will be coming in random. Proofreading and highlighting is 
keep success in multiple choice. So skimming is very important. Understand each and every choice what they are talking about. For example, in 11th question, in the A choice, the number of traffic accidents has risen. So how would you read it? Number of accidents risen. This much only you need to read. Others, the traffic. Because in the heading only they have mentioned traffic. You need not to uh, read the traffic again. Number of accidents risen. Amount of traffic you need not to read. Amount on the roads has increased. Types of vehicles changed. If you are reading this much, so ultimately the three answers are one is the traffic accidents have increased. One answer. Second one is the amount of traffic is increased. Then the third topic is the type of vehicle has changed. So either of these three will be the answer. So you'll have to just understand the choices. Then you'll have to make a rightful decision. As I mentioned before, understand the each meaning of choice. And what good uh, information for you if you feel that in the 11th question when they were telling about the answer C, the types of vehicles on the roads have not really changed. If they say like that, that is a contradictory statement to the choice C. Then you can easily strike off this. This will not be coming up again. Then the answers will be about A or B. If you are missing any of it, you can just take a guess between A and B and not C. Because C or show that they have given a contradictory statement. Watch out for the detractors. As I told you before, they will be telling about the types of vehicles uh, were consistent till previous year. But in the recent years, we are seeing that the types of vehicles have certainly changed. So, there are destructors uh, in place, so if you are careful enough, you will understand. In the section 2, there is also one more type of questions which may arise is maps. So, how to attempt these maps? First one is to understand the direction using the compass. So, here, they are just telling you the direction. Top side is north, bottom side is south, towards your right is east, and towards your left is west. So, you just understand this. Sometimes they will tell you in the northeast direction. That means you will have to see in this direction. If they are telling about the west direction, this is in this direction, like this. You will have to just go through the compass over here here to understand the direction. Then also before the audio is getting played, so you'll have to just highlight the places on this map. Like this is a station road is very important, bank is important, high street. You have to just highlight these so that when the audio plays, you need not to keep on searching for where the supermarket is. There, because there are two supermarkets where the bank is like that you need not to search again so when you highlight you'll be knowing where exactly the bank location is so something about c he'll tell you right opposite to the bank so you'll be knowing the answer that's why few of the terminologies used for location is like near in front of next to beside across from between all these terminologies you'll have to get used to it. terminologies for direction turn right turn left go straight on travel northwest go past pass through all these are few of the terminologies used for determining the direction now for paths they'll just tell at the junction at the bend near the sharp bend dead end across the road for example this e how would you call it as this e will be called as it is at the junction of school road and high street then the place e can be marked as it is at the junction let us go to section 3 over here majority of the times in my all four attempts in uh, section 3 i used to at least get five to seven multiple choice questions okay and uh, i've told you how to approach the multiple choice questions now we are just uh, checking about match the heading so in this type of questions uh, the strategy for attempting this question is like all the questions like the 20 they'll be mentioning about the eldest child middle child youngest child twin only child and the child with much older, older siblings, it will be in the order. It will not be in the zigzag order. So you need to be you not, not to worry at all. Go through the options. In this, skimming means you have to go through the options available and you need not to go through the questions here because this will be played in order and you need not to read again. So you'll have to just go through the headings available over here. Strike the options once used. For example, if you are going for a paper-based test, so uh, for example, for the 21st question, the answer is F, cooperative, then it is for sure that again the F will not be repeated. So you can just strike out this cooperative so that whenever you are approaching again, so you need not to go through all the seven headings. You can on, you have already eliminated one, so you can just have a look at six headings. It will make your job easier. In a computer-based test, all these headings have a drag and drop option. So you'll have to just drag this heading from here and you'll have to place at the appropriate direction. So you need to practice this. Otherwise, if you are practicing only in the books and when you're going for computer-based test, you may not understand how to drag and drop. Then uh, guess the options at the end of the sections if it is missed and not in between. This is a very important step. For example, if you have missed for something, for a middle child, you could not recognize anything. Don't guess it over here. Okay. You attempt all the questions. Then your uh, here, the majority of the options are eliminated. So then out of the available two or three options, then you can get, take a guess. Then there will be at least a 30 to 35% chance of getting the right answer with a guess also. So it's a very important strategy for you. If you have missed the answer, then guess it at the end of the section and not in between. Let us go to section four now. In this majority of the times, as I mentioned, 
mentioned before, the section four is majorly about a monologue in which an author will be telling a story or telling some uh, case study wherein he'll be mentioning about why the trees are dying or what is the environmental impact of this activity like this. And one important thing is that they are just trying to make it harder for you. They are just messing with your brain and they'll not be giving any gaps or any uh, free time in between the questions. Like here, from the question 31 to 40, there will not be any break. You'll have to just go through all the questions in the one minute of time, whatever is given to you at the start of the test. So the strategy would be is as same as the previous one. Like you'll have to read the questions. Here they have mentioned it is one word only. Do not land up while writing two words. Then you'll be marked as incorrect. Skim the questions. Definitely in this section, you cannot read each and every word. You'll have to just skim it. I'll take a separate section. How to skim the questions. How to approach listening. How do I approach? So as to make sure that if it helps you, follow the question sequence. Get used to foreign accent. These are all the things which I mentioned before. And watch out for distractors and plurals and spelling needs to be kept in mind. Guess the answers if you have missed hearing. Anticipate the possible answers while proofreading. Thanks for uh, being with me till now. So few of the tips which will definitely improve or enhance your band score in listening are marked over here. One is that practice is what makes you perfect. Practice every day using Cambridge books. Don't refer any of the online sites. They are just far from reality. You just refer Cambridge. If you are hitting the right answers in Cambridge, then definitely you will do perform well in your IELTS test. Get acquainted with the various accents. If you are finding it difficulty in understanding the accents of the people, just listen to English news and uh, listen to some of the podcasts so as to make sure that you are understanding their accent. And after the completion of each test, don't just have a look at your score and close the test. Just analyze how much you have scored good, what are all the wrong answers, why you uh, misinterpreted it and landed up in a, a wrong answer. If you are not understanding why it was wrong, then just go through the audio scripts available at the back of the book. Analyze it. This is how you are training your mind and making sure that you are hitting good numbers in your actual examination. Then practice using headphones. These are quite important. You will be keeping your brain away from the distractions. And during the practice test, identify your weak areas. For example, my weak area is MCQ questions in section 3 with the lengthier words. Practice it quite common so as to make sure that your brain understands it, how to approach it and you'll be able to score good marks. Work on these improvement areas at least half an hour a day so as to make sure that you're not committing the same mistakes in the actual examination because it is huge amount which you are paying approximately 15 and a half thousand. So make sure that you are ready just before attempting the examination. One piece of advice for you, attempt your IELTS test only when you're 100% sure that you're ready for this examination and in listening if your target band is 8 plus then make sure that in the practice test you're at least hitting 37 to 40 marks then only you are ready and you are ready for the IELTS test at the end if you find my videos promising enough and useful for you just please support my content by hitting like share and subscribe